How do you deal with the high complexity to learn Kubernetes? So like Linux, for example, most people don't know Linux either, and they use it every day. Most people doesn't, don't know how the virtual file system works. They don't know how IO works. They don't know how inodes work. Uh, most people don't know how Linux actually manages memory. They don't have any idea how memory segments work. They have no idea how it picks and assigns CPUs or how it prioritizes CPU caches or what a cache miss is. Most people have no idea how the Linux kernel works, but they're able to use it, right? Because typically you use something like Ubuntu or Red Hat and they assemble the user land and kernel space and they put some defaults and they give you a system that works. And through muscle memory, somehow people remember how to use 7,000 tools, right? Cat, proc file system, pipe into TR, lowercase, the second column, put it in this other thing so I can see the process. That's not easy. <laughs> That's crazy. But we know how to do it. So it doesn't seem so scary because a lot of us have been doing it for so long that we think we understand like a bash shell versus all the other interfaces in the kernel. This stuff is just, it's not even compatible, right? We, we, we piece it together. So number one, Kubernetes is new. So if you've never seen Kubernetes before, and you really want to understand it at the degree that I've been talking about with the kernel, like how does etcd work? That's a whole distributed key value store built on the raft, you know, a cluster protocol. Like that, that stuff ain't easy to understand. Consensus is not an easy topic for many people to understand by itself. Networking is not an easy topic to understand by itself. So I think what most people have to do is you have to give yourself the same amount of time. If it took you 10 years to get good with Kuber, uh, Linux, then come on, you got to be fair. It's going to take you more than 10 minutes to get familiar with Kubernetes. So the way I would deal with this is start with learning how to use the Kubernetes API, right? Like most people start system administration by SSHing to a server, running some commands with bash. In the Kubernetes world, that would be creating your YAML files and kubectl apply. You may not learn how to roll your own Kubernetes cluster on day one. So imagine getting a fully managed Kubernetes cluster you click the button, you get an API, and it may deal with things like auto-scaling for you, right? So at that point, you're just learning the Kubernetes objects, how to store secrets, how to reference config files, how to configure a load balancer using the Kubernetes API. And I think for most people, they can grasp like, oh, there's a configuration syntax, I'll learn it, and I can configure it to run my apps in a container. Now, when you go below that level, you start talking about managing Kubernetes itself, that's where I think we got to exercise a little bit more patience to say, hey, maybe I'm going to start by troubleshooting in the node. How does Docker work? How do I manage CPU and memory? That kind of thing. But then the control plane is a whole different animal. If you want to learn how the Kubernetes scheduler works, that's very different than learning how to create an app that runs on Kubernetes. Most people don't know how the Linux kernel scheduler works either. So I think what we got to do is make sure that we don't try to lump in all aspects of Kubernetes on day one, use the API, and over time, learn how to manage the underlying system if it ever comes to that.